Hi, it's uh, I Book My Name podcast. Uh, we decided uh, uh, to invite uh, Peter Garrity once again uh, to make a follow-up uh, to our previous, to one of our previous podcasts. Uh, uh, hi, Peter. Many thanks uh, for agreeing to <laughs> join us once again. Um, this book, uh, again, 21st, it's photographs by Herman Leonard who is a very well-known photographer of jazz figures. Um, So it's a a note. It's a note, yeah. Okay, I I was trying to guess, and (laughs) I wasn't uh sure. (laughs) Well, and I like like the fact that you don't know exactly what you're getting yourself in for until you get into the book. So, you know, it could be seen, I don't know, it doesn't necessarily have to be seen as a note. But of course, once you get inside the book, then it's, aha, now I realize what was going on on the outside. And I kind of like that. And so again, the magnets play a part. And it opens like so. And, and, then, and now it's a metronome. That, it is actually, isn't it? That's true. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. Well, I didn't want it to be square. I wanted yeah. some... So I wanted the dynamics of the angle. And then you open this up, and there's the book and the whole thing. Yeah. So um, the, the paste downs for the box uh, are silk. Mm-hmm. The cover is silk. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about that again in a minute. Um, and then you pick this up and there is an extra photograph. I can't remember what this photograph is, but it's probably a nice one. Oh, actually, it's, it's a, there's a couple of photographs in here. But um, Herman Leonard uh, took some really iconic photographs of Billie Holiday and Ella Fitzgerald and Count Basie, Frank Sinatra. Um, Now, these, again, are papers that Julia did right here. Mm -hmm. And you see this sitting in the bottom of the box. Well, these are little finger things, and you pick it up, and there's a DVD with more photographs on it. There's more photographs in this book than any other that 21st has done. They tend to do only um, palladium photographs, or platinum photographs, I'm sorry, platinum Mm -hmm, ones. mm -hmm. And um, and there are so many photographs that they wanted to use that they did do um, some of them um, offset so they could... um, you know, use a lot more. That's Quincy Jones who wrote the uh, the um, preface to the book. You know, so there's a lot of offset photographs here. Um, and then at the back, you get into um, the platinum ones. As we head back there, note that there's like cigarette smoke. Yeah. Um, in many of these everywhere yeah <laughs> yeah so you'll see that a lot um so here are the platinum prints um you know ella fitzgerald and count basie um in there and you see more cigarette smoke and stuff like that imagine sinning in conditions like that <laughs> what's that uh, imagine sitting in conditions like that uh, with clouds of uh, smoke around you, but then yes. the, the, the past is another country. Really yeah. difficult well, to imagine it nowadays. As a child, I had to put up with this because my father was a very heavy smoker. Well, only 30 years ago, even on the plains, everyone was smoking. Right, exactly. So all of that smoke found its way to the front of the book, you know, going up until it hits the ceiling in the club and then just sort of disperses across the club. And is it sort of some sort of marbling or? Exactly. Um, 
there's um or sasaminagashi or something like that no it's marbling um just about two miles away from my house is chena river marblers mm -hmm. um and regina st john mm -hmm. came over to the bindery first i made i made a uh, marbling tub i'd never really marbled before so i made a marbling tub and then regina came over and spent several hours um with me to help me understand how to marble silk and um you know then she left me on my own and i marbled <laughs> a bunch of silk. and then the silk is just drummed on you know it's it's not it's only glued down on the underneath side mm -hmm. and then the title is just blind stamped with a clear foil um to bring it out um but you know it's nice to learn how to do another technique to do the marbling i really enjoy doing that um you know all of this is just fun to keep learning this this stuff <laughs> yeah that, that's Another an important one. part part of the process to have fun oh it is i mean i never wanted to be somebody you know, uh, since becoming a binder, I didn't want to be a binder who just did the same thing over and over again. I don't find that to be, you know, I get bored is what it comes <laughs> down to. So if I can figure these things out and play with them, then I'm no longer bored. Uh, sometimes I'm glad to have employees doing a lot of this work because sometimes I just get bored. You know, after I've done the figuring, I kind of want to go on to the next thing. Um, admittedly, I do have to do some of the work too. My employees insist on it, but nonetheless, um, it's nice trying to figure this stuff out. You know, so again, we're with the magnets. Okay. And so here's the book. So is, is it so, vel velvet on the, on the inside? Once again, or uh, it's it's a fake uh, velvet. Okay. Um, it's it's a paperbacked material. It's nice, but it's not the real thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Blind stamped it. Um, this these are photographs by Eiko Hosoi, um, Japanese photographer who is I understand is Japanese national treasure. Um, and the photographs in here are really quite gorgeous um, and work very nicely with um, the uh, platinum process. Um, so uh, I, I asked this question uh, uh, some of our previous guests uh, uh, because uh, uh, different book binders have absolutely different relationships with, with book boxes. And uh, we can see that uh, you, you pay a lot of attention to the uh, book box, its design, its structure, its uh, idea, and uh, what it reveals and how it reveals the book. Uh, so I guess uh, book box is, is a very important part of the, of the book for you. Well, it's all about presentation. Um, you know, sometimes I think of it as um, when you're going into a theater, um, you know, a proscenium theater and the curtains are closed and there's music playing to get you into the mood and you're staring at the curtains and all that kind of stuff, waiting for something to open. And then the curtains open and this is what you have. So I like playing with that idea of leading people in to the book itself. Um, and try not to make it terribly obvious. Um, so, yeah, this one here, this book is bound with black calfskin on the spine, mm -hmm. and the covers are plastic. It's a material called Centra, which uh, I believe sign painters use it. Um, mm -hmm. I got black Centra, and I had... Um, well, the ink sheet's not cooperating. 
Oh, no, that's right. That is the pace down. Sorry, I've forgotten the book. So the boards were cut out and chamfered oh, by okay. a woodworker using a CNC machine. Well, this looks like a nice. And so, and also there's a, uh, there is. Um, Recess. Yeah, recess for the leather to fit into. Yeah. Um, so I could glue them together. Um, this was it. Was it uh, uh, hard to marry uh, leather and plastic, or it's just a matter of using the right adhesives? It, it really is just a matter of using the right adhesives. Um, we're making a set of boxes right now for one of our clients, um, where the material inside is very delicate. Mm -hmm. uh, stuff that can easily chip. And so we're lining the insides of the boxes with Tyvek. And the Tyvek is just simply glued down to thin cardstock, wrapped around the edges, and then put into place. Um, and it's, I was surprised how easily the Tyvek glued down um, <laughs> just with a 60-40 mixture of uh, EVA and methyl cellulose. Mm -hmm. And it went down quite nicely. On this book, after we, um, after we had them cut, uh, it was black Sentra, but the Sentra isn't that durable of a material. And there's, uh, in a town, not, a city not far from here, Holyoke, I found a company that does specialized painting. Um, they paint special automobiles and things like that. And so they painted these boards with um, some kind of an acrylic. I don't remember what it was right now. So they were completely painted and it took, you know, close to a month for them to dry to where it was completely set and would not change. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the boards are extremely durable now. Uh, it's very difficult to scratch them. And then I had the uh, photographer's chop was, um, or his signature, was put down uh, with a, um, a urethane silk screen. <coughs> so um, actually, I didn't do much on the binding of this. We had to sew them together and, of course, work the leather, but. You know, we were using other people to do other parts of the um, of the cover. I love how you always refer to other uh, professionals and specialists you, you use in your projects. Uh, 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 this person is uh, is in a town nearby. That person is in a town nearby. It's absolutely different set of mind comparing to uh, what you are doing and how how you live when you live in Moscow, for example, because <laughs> everything is in Moscow. And then it's right. just one one large city, and everyone is right, in Moscow. Right. But for you, is you 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 always need to travel, you know, to to near nearest towns or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, we we live in a nice, quiet area of of the state of Massachusetts. So uh, yeah, and it's it's nice um, establishing these relationships with other people um, that. Uh, you know, can uh, we do stuff for them? They do stuff for us. I do work for some of the local woodworkers, like line drawers with mm -hmm. silver safe cloth or put leather tops on and tool the leather tops. Um, you know, stuff like that. We all sort of work with each other. Yeah, I, I also, I also, so, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I no. also want to, wanted to ask you a bit more about boxes in general because when, when you taught, uh, 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 our class at the Academy of uh, American Academy of Bookbinding, uh, uh, we were making bo boxes for books, but not only boxes for books. Uh, you you made some special boxes as well. That uh, uh, box uh, box for sweets uh, with the letters A B yes. on it. And uh, <laughs> uh, did you have a lot of experience in your career with making boxes just to that that have to be used as boxes to store stuff, not not to put put books into into them? Well. Um, I've made a lot of boxes over the years. 
you know, standard boxes. We have a, a major client of ours is a conservation um, organization, and um, they don't make the boxes for the books that they conserve uh -huh. um, because, frankly, they don't want to waste their time doing that. They would rather get on to doing the work on the next book and so we've been making boxes for them for probably 25, 30 years. Um, so we make a lot of boxes. Now, admittedly, I personally don't make many of those boxes any longer. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the company, you know, Praxis Bindery certainly makes a lot of boxes. Um, but I like figuring things out. I like trying to understand how to create something. Um, and so I just get enamored of trying to, um, you know, just trying to do things differently and figuring them out. In fact, this next um, one right here um, was actually a relatively hard box to figure out. Mm -hmm. um, and I did the box this way mostly just because I wanted to, not because it, it doesn't really have a relationship with anything. Now, you can see that circle yep. there and the line. Mm -hmm. And so... And the line you, goes, uh, goes to the site as well. Uh, yeah, it's, it's where the box splits. Okay. And so, you know, you've got the box here. And where you saw that partial circle, now you're seeing a partial triangle. <laughs> well, it's still a triangle. <laughs> a partial it, it, triangle it, is still... It, exactly. Exactly. Because <laughs> it's got that big line coming down. Yeah. But then when I open the box this way, so I made this box much harder than it needed to be. Because what happens now is that this, the left-hand side, inverts right over the book. Yeah. Um, and the, you know, then the other one comes over. This one has the, uh, this is the extra uh, suite of prints that accompanies the book. Mm -hmm. um, and it's uh, it's a regular clamshell, but um, rather than having uh, a secondary uh, clamshell, this has what we call a locator board, mm -hmm. which is a board cut so that it fits yep. right in and will um, you know keep the box together. Mm -hmm. And then when you get into the book itself, this is the actual book. Um, I'm blanking on the name. Now, now we can see the the design oh, yeah, of, the, of the of the of the book box. Uh, right. This is the book is called Flatland. Mm -hmm. It's reputed to be the first science fiction book which this guy wrote actually as a um a tool for teaching geometry um and it's about um a two-dimensional shape that ventures into a one-dimensional land and then ventures into a three-dimensional land the photographer in here his name is michael jackson um, let me show you some of his. This is work. this is this is uh, quite quite interesting coincidence because just a minute uh, before you joined uh, our call, uh, Pavel showed me some uh, uh, simulation he made of uh, four-dimensional uh, uh, objects uh, uh, projected into three dimensions and <laughs> moving in different ways. Oh, nice! <laughs> nice coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> These uh, photographs that Michael Jackson makes, if I understand it right, I think what he does is he makes them under the enlarger, 
by shining light onto the paper and blocking light. It's not an actual photograph, and each one is a single one-off photograph. So when they did the book, what they had to do was to, you know, the, the editor of the press, Steve Albaheri, chose the, I don't know, 10, 12, 15, I can't remember how many photographs are in here, but he chose the ones that he liked and then had negatives made of them mm -hmm. so they could be repeated. Mm -hmm. um, let me see if I can find another photograph just to give you again a sense of it. When it comes to designing the books, the look of them, I, I prefer to integrate with the material in the book. Um, my thought is that if there was not a writer who created the book, or if there was not an illustrator who worked on the book, the book wouldn't exist. So for me to put something on it that has no relationship to what's going on inside, um, it doesn't seem quite right. So I prefer to, uh, to try and utilize things I find in the book and bring them out, I'm figuring that my job here, at least in this case, my job here is to just make you interested enough in the book that you want to go inside and see what's going on. So again, uh, Julia did these covers using uh, airbrush. And what she did was like, for instance, she did a full size sheet that looked like this and a full size sheet that looked like this. Mm -hmm. And then we cut them in half. Well, not quite in half. She cut them and then she took one from one and another from the other and matched them up until she liked the way they looked. And so they, this, small, this, this, this small gray triangle on the top of the uh, uh, central line disturbs me just a bit and it's so perfect that it disturbs me <laughs> isn't that the point yeah exactly it's just yeah. it attracts your your attention and uh, makes right. you uncomfortable <laughs> so yeah it it's does. perfect <laughs> yeah yeah and there's another book someplace in the world that has the other half of this yeah. and one that has the other half of this um and on the back actually on the back we did choose to use the same paper okay rather than mix them, we use just the same paper. Um, I don't like to do the fronts and the backs identical. I like to sort of break them up and use them in different ways. Um, so the, the spine is parchment. Um, the line is parchment. Mm -hmm. um, in, the, um, in Michael Jackson's photographs, you will see... And does, does, does the line turn in... Uh... Yes, it does. Okay. And okay. it disappears under the, yeah. under the paste end. Yeah, thank you. Um, Michael Jackson's photographs, you might see um, sort of like a luminescent line. Oh, here's one. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, there, there's yeah. luminescent yeah. lines. So that's what the parchment is. Plus this book, Flatland, um, that was reproduced here. It's about geometry. So, um, you know, it's just, there's a regular size board, then there's a thin board and a thin board with this, with a trough in between. So, you know, all we had to do is just lay the parchment line in there after the two papers were put down. I, I like how modern it looks. Uh, whereas uh, the novel in question, from what I remember, is uh, late Victorian. 18th, and, I want to say it's... And yet it makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. I, I think it does, exactly. Um, now, I'm fairly pleased with the way this one turned out. Um, I am often not pleased with the work I do, or I should say that after, after finishing a book, there's like a postpartum depression. 
you know, where the thing is out of your body and you're just fed up with the whole world and you want it out of your sight. Not that I treat my kids that way all the time, but, <laughs> and I didn't have postpartum depression with my kids. So uh, that wasn't my problem. But um, when you take on something that is such an immense project and you put so much of your efforts into it, um, there's a letdown when it's done. Um, and a lot of times I don't particularly like the way the finished result looks. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll just sort of mope around about the whole thing for quite a while. And it's nice having these books with me because I can come back a year later and look at the books with fresh eyes and think, oh, yeah, I like that. It came out well. Um, now, again, Julia did these covers, um, much like with, uh, with that one there. Um, the ideas were either mostly mine or discussed with Julia, but then the execution was all Julia's. Um, you know, so uh, it's nice working with other people, too, to utilize the stuff that they can do. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's kind of about it. I did pull out... Um, well, it's it's a lot. So uh, thanks, th thank you very much because it was uh, it was so different, and uh, you 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 showed so many details and uh, uh, you know mock-ups and all that stuff. So it it's 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 a wonderful thing you did Good. today. <laughs> Good. I'll show you this last one, and then we'll take a quick look at the shop. Um, one of the things here is that this book is a, the book in this box is parchment. So we make a, um, we can take a quick look at that in a second, but again with the boxes, here is a flap that's connected to the front of the box. It'll oh, okay. yeah. break down like so. Yeah. Um, but with a parchment book where the, um, the covers might... Um, they might warp a little bit. This kind of a flap helps keep them down. And so that's just a okay. you know, part of the This is a so, smart, smart, smart solution. Yeah, it works well. Um, we do those for clients that have that type of... And I guess, I guess it, it's, it's important to uh, have them uh, close in different directions because they uh, counter, counteract uh, with each other. Exactly. Exactly. If if it would have been hinged on this side, yeah. Yeah. the parchment yeah. would have just pushed this up and then it would have pushed yeah. the box. But since they're, um, as you observed, they're hinged on opposite sides, the book can't do that. And since the inside of a box is a microclimate, it doesn't change very quickly. So if you have um, a book stored in a box, and outside of the box, there's some rather um, large fluctuations in temperature or humidity. Mm -hmm. Those fluctuations aren't going to transmit through the box that quickly. So like if it's a, a really muggy day outside, the book really isn't going to know that, especially if it's a dry day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so having that microclimate also makes them uh, makes it um, that with the parchment it will stay usually they will stay flat anyway but with that flap it'll help so do you want to take a look at the shop yeah absolutely sure so you know this is the kind of building oh you have snow <laughs> yes we have a foot of snow a foot of snow. Yesterday. How do we, by the way? Ah, yeah, it's, I don't want the snow. It's plus 11 here in, 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 uh, in the Netherlands. I'm afraid that's a metric I haven't gotten into yet. So it should be something like uh, uh, between 50 and 60s. I, I, I'm not sure about the exact, oh, okay. uh, but yeah. Warm, huh? Yeah. It's, it's yeah, so, it's quite, quite warm. <laughs> So starting at the unimpo unimposing end of the 
studio. But very um, important. Yeah, this, um, this is a light box for light bleaching. Mm -hmm. um, it's a stainless steel sink with fluorescent bulbs in the surface. So I can fill the sink up with water mm -hmm. and I can wash or float wash objects in here. And if they need to be bleached, I can use the lights. Now, I haven't used this thing in years. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not something I do on a regular basis at all. And it looks like something custom made, not, not a production. Uh, uh... Well, yeah, interestingly enough, there was a framer who wanted to treat uh, a very large document. And he asked me how to do it, so I explained it to him. And his client worked at uh, the submarine facility in uh, Connecticut. <laughs> and so he had somebody there build this stainless steel tank. Mm -hmm. I guess somebody that worked at the submarine place and knew how to do this. And then he gave it to the framer. And the framer didn't use it for years and years. So he asked me if I wanted it. And I went down and picked it up. And I, as I say, I don't use it a lot, but I do often enough. This gives you a little bit of an idea of the shop itself uh -huh. from here. Um, this is by far the biggest shop we've seen so far. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I don't, yeah, you're not going to see shops too much bigger than this. Um, I, I have bought pretty much every piece of equipment I could possibly want <laughs> and, and use. Um, and, you know, as I said, I've, I've had employees. Now, my employees aren't in here right now, but there's plenty of bench space for if and when they do come back. But I have to say, I'm enjoying working in here by myself so much, and they've got their own shops. I may not have them come back. So, you know, we've got a large 50-inch board cutter. Um, for the longest time, that was the only cutter I had. Um, Standing press, drying rack, mm -hmm. um, dry mount press, which we do use on occasion um, for various things. A glue machine, which I don't use any longer. And in fact, I would like to get rid of it, but so far I haven't. Um, now with the magnets, this is how we do the magnets. Okay. is with the drill, paper drill. So, you know, I can cut all of these various size holes mm -hmm. through the binder's board using this paper drill and then drop the magnets into it and put thin cardstock on either side. And then you can't tell whether there's a, that there is anything in there at all. Uh, corner rounder. Uh, uh, sorry, do you use niobium uh, uh, magnets? What kind of magnets do you use? Yeah, yeah, the rare earth ones, exactly. Um, and, you know, they're still relatively cheap. Yeah. Um, you know, like you can get them for a dollar a piece, sometimes fifty cents a piece, depending on the size. I just um, I just ordered some twenty thousand uh, five by five by five millimeter cubic uh, uh, magnets. Uh, uh, what are you going to do? <laughs> Just recently, several months ago, I, I started making these sorts of uh, uh, clamps for box making. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and uh, uh, stay the, the large sized uh, clamps I make uh, eat up to 160 magnets per set. So. Uh, you can imagine how many of them I, I can use uh, for for a for right. just several orders, and yeah, but yeah. The, when you buy them in bulk, different. it's it's much cheaper. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I understand. It's fun inventing these things and making them. Yeah. So the guillotine, um, one board bench. Mm -hmm. We have more board storage later. There's another job under here. Um, it's a reproduction of the Edward Curtis Native American photographs. Um, there's 
25 uh, books in 20, it's a 25 volume set. And uh, I'm going to do those all in full parchment. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a job for the next year. Yes. Mm -hmm. I no. hope to start it soon, but this other job is, we're going to be working on this, on this big job that we're on to right now, at least to the end of April. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, jobs uh, this big, uh, surely you're contact, uh, you contacted like months or even a year in advance. You can't just oh, yes. on an order. Right. We've been, this, the big job we're working on right now, we've been talking about it, um, yeah, for I think about a year and a half now or almost that long. And uh, Edward Curtis books, I've, you know, I've had those for a year. I'm anxious to get on to them. Um, just haven't had the chance yet. Uh, I mean, we, we have um, probably like a year's backlog, more than a year's backlog worth of work in the shop. And it never seems to change. It pretty much is always the... Uh, you know, we get some, we get one done and goes out the door and there's another one to do. Um, th that's great. That makes you feel safe, I imagine. And it does. It does. Um, again, I'm still trying to learn how to price so that, you know, we get the job done well and we get paid for it. That's still a little sticky sometimes, but yeah. So another floor press. I love these uh, brand plates on, on, on all this uh, sort of all the machinery. Yes, yes, I do too. This belonged to another binder in the building who sold it to me. Mm -hmm. I always liked that press. And one of two backers. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Brenda Gallagher uh, has a pretty similar backing press. Uh. In her that one's a that one is a fairly common um, one in the states. Yeah. Um, and then my uh, French combination press. This is my bench right here, the messy one. And so I, I guess use that, that's that's plowing plowing setup as well because it, it has a guide. That's right, exactly. So I use that when I'm going to plow something. Um, Another bench, and this is the 40-inch cutter, which is really sort of the workhorse of the shop. Um, the, and, the a and, nice, the and the beautiful horse. <laughs> it, it, it is. And it you is. could probably cut a horse with it. <laughs> Just about, yes. No, it, it's, it's a very fine cutter, and it's extremely accurate. Um, it, it, well, it, 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 it went dark pretty, pretty fast with Spiral here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's so, a, uh, an amazing tool. It's, it's very handsome. Yeah. It, well, um, <laughs> uh, when I would buy a piece of equipment, often I would leave it with a man who has a shop in the parking lot below our building, and he would clean the things up. He would do welding and repairs, whatever was necessary for the cast iron stuff. And then I would have him paint it a color mm -hmm. because I didn't want a lot of black equipment all around. <laughs> so, you know, like this one is red. Um, this one I never had painted, but this but, one he painted. But it, it has a name. Uh, yes. Uh, my <laughs> oldest daughter, both of my daughters have spent time in the shop like when school was out for the day or you know that kind of thing the snow day or something so my oldest daughter she would name the equipment <laughs> that's amazing so uh, most of the equipment has a name sunflower <laughs> yes exactly so uh and another bench um and, you know, just models of things that we've done, things I can pull out and 
talk with a client about, you know, so they, uh, they can see what can be done. The sewing frames. Um, the hole punch machine. Okay. And the shipping bench. I, I, I like the, the colored ra rails you have there. Uh, a, a nice collection are, of, of weights, yeah. These are great weights. And the ones that have the holes in them, wow. I, can, yeah. I can put a broomstick yeah. through those with a roll of cloth and just roll the cloth off the broomstick through those weights. Okay. This, yeah, that, this is a great idea. I never saw it used uh, uh, this way with holes. Yeah, well, you know, it's a railroad track, so that was, I guess, where the spot where the bolts went through to yeah. hold one end to the next. Yeah. And then the uh, storage area. <laughs> well, that that's a nice storage of of cloth and stuff. It's too much. I have way too much stuff. And then there's stuff up above. <laughs> Job, you know, the leftover parts of jobs we've done, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, some of the books I didn't pull down to show you because it was just too much. Yeah. And then this is the leather room. So, uh, you know, the drawers, you know, filled with leather. Nice colors. Yes. You know, all kinds of colors. One of the woodworkers in the building built this bench as well as the other benches out there. Mm -hmm. And so the litho stones embedded in the bench. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's that's smart. Yeah. This is a handy thing here too. Um, when I'm using a spoke shave. Um, which I won't do right now, but what I like to do is to take the leather and I can put my stomach up against it mm -hmm. to hold it. Mm -hmm. But if I do it over the bare edge yeah. of the stone, yeah. then it marks the leather. Yeah. So I have this roll that just has a, a non-stick spongy material on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm holding it to the wall, so it's not hurting the leather at all. Yeah. This is a machine that if you've never seen one, whenever anybody comes into the shop and sees this, they can't figure it out what it is. They think it's a sewing machine. Is it some sort of it, pairing machine? It is a pairing machine. Yeah. And it does an incredible job of pairing leather. I, um, I, know, I, never, I never saw a pairing machine... Uh, uh, of this type before. So there is a, um, I'm not sure I can get a good picture of it. There's, there it is. This is a what they call a bell knife. Mm -hmm. It's a circular knife. So it spins around. Mm -hmm. There is a feed roll. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. you put the leather in, you put the foot down, mm -hmm. And it just goes right in. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on what foot you're using and how you have it adjusted, it can do bevels, it can do flat work, mm -hmm. um, pretty much anything that you want. Um, but like so many other things that we use, you know, it's a machine, but you can't just walk right in, turn it on, and do something marvelous with it. It takes a long time to learn how to use the thing. Um, but it right, it speeds things up a lot. For instance, what I I, um, I love this sort of uh, machine design from uh, uh, early 20th century and the middle of the 20th century with all these curves and uh, uh, yes, yeah, I do too. How, how old is it actually? Uh, this particular one is probably 40 years old, something like that. When I worked at Harcourt, we had one that was, you know, probably went back to the 20s or 30s, maybe, uh, a much older model. Um, 
than this one. But I'll use it. Uh, you can't see it on this now because I've already used the spoke shave. Mm -hmm. But um, I'll go around the edges mm -hmm. and take that down. And then I'll use my spoke shave to smooth it out. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you, you probably can't really see it on this piece, but you know, maybe, just... maybe if you if you can uh, uh, take it. Oh yeah, it focused and then it mm -hmm. lost. Yeah, maybe someone will see something. Yeah, yeah, and it does it very fast. So it's a real help to have. We also have. Um... Do you have any tricks for getting rid of all these small pieces and particles of leather because they always stick to everything and. Uh, it can be really, no. really hard to, to get them out. Uh, I don't. I come in here with a vacuum periodically, but no, I've got no tricks. <laughs> it, it, it's a pain, especially where I live. In the wintertime, it gets really dry in the building. Okay. And so the stuff just floats around. And a fume hood I can use for chemicals or for sanding or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever I need. Vents to the outside which is very useful. Um, uh, do, uh, do you use lots of toxic substances? <laughs> no, not really. I do, we, we'll do sanding sometimes. Um, <clears throat> if I'm using any chemicals, <clears throat> it's probably something like maybe acetone or alcohol. It's not a really bad, bad material. I don't like using that stuff if I can help it. Mm -hmm. um, and I use less of it uh, now. I used to be a little more cavalier with it long ago. So there's more board storage. The uh, conservation by design board, green board, is larger than I than would fit in my other board shelf so we had to build new shelves for it so you 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 continue to use this board because you you taught us that uh, it's one of the best sorts of, of boards you can you can use for your bookbinding projects yeah but it's difficult to get we're still awaiting a shipment to yeah. finish that large job with yeah and we're worried that we may not get it in time yeah they're because... not good about yeah. that yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when uh, it, in, in 2015, when I was studying, uh, you told us that there was some uh, crisis with suppliers or something, and the supply of green board was uh, limited in the United States. Uh, but I guess uh, after that, it, uh, it was fixed or something. But yeah. It, it still comes and goes. Okay. The, they don't think of binders as um, being large... Uh, well, we're not. We don't buy a lot of stuff. It's the company's owned by Larson Jewel, which is a frame company. Uh -huh. And there's thousands of frame shops, uh -huh. but there's not thousands of binders. So as a group, we don't buy a lot of material. Um, so they don't go to a lot of trouble to bring it in, uh -huh. which is unfortunate because it's great stuff. I like it. But, you know, when, when I can get it, I have to buy a lot of it. Yeah. And then the uh, office, such as it is, mm -hmm. along with, um, you know, there's probably, well, the drawers are closed, but there's probably well over a thousand books in here. <laughs> um, is know, this your research library? What's that? Is this basically your research library? Yes, it is. And I use it a lot. Um, you know, there's, 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 I've got pretty much just about every book on binding that I can find, but then there's also books on printing and paper making and chemistry, um, as well as journals and stuff that I get. So, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff, a bit of a collector. And then the last room, this is the, the finishing room. So, you know, replete with the finishing tools that one expects to find. Mm -hmm. And then some. <laughs> yeah, you can have to. 
you know, oh, all these why do you need so many of these? Uh, are they, uh, do they have different shapes of... Uh, yeah, they'll, they'll, well, they'll have different ones. I've acquired ones over the years that actually sort of supplant some of the older ones I have. And I just haven't gotten rid of some of the older ones yet. At some point, I need to get rid of some of the older ones that I don't use. Because um, like I've got a, a good number of single and double line fillets, uh, more than I need. Those I could get rid of. But then, you know, there's also the, uh, you know, the decorative ones that, um, you know, those are one of a kind. So those I need to keep. Um, uh, they look uh, handmade. Am I right? Um, I don't know. Some of them certainly are not. Some of them, uh, some of them I I bought brand new from P and S years ago. You know, like uh, I think that one. No, there. I can't. I can't see clear enough with a little phone to to get it onto the screen. But most of these are old, and some are the old kind that were used for account books mm -hmm. where you do these big heavy blind tooled lines on suede on the account books um and then you know the smaller hand tools and i have two sets of gouges and pallets mm -hmm. um this is a half point line and then in the cabinet back there, I have another set that's a one-point line. Mm -hmm. And then if you see around the vacuum cleaner, there's type cabinets, yeah. type cabinet, type cabinets. Uh, more, more type, type cabinets. cabinets. <laughs> yeah. More type cabinets <laughs> and more type cabinets. Um, and then the presses, I thought would be interesting to show you. I mean, this one is a Kensal, which is a fairly common stamping press in this country. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, like my red cutter out there, this is really the workhorse of um, stamping. They're, they're great machines. Um, I have a chase that fits into it mm -hmm. that has self-centering pallets oh, okay yeah and the self-centering pallets center by that slot on each other so i can set lots of type in here and then i can put this whole thing up into the kensaw mm -hmm. stamp on it um and then we have what's Probably the nicest one is this one here, which my daughter named eggplant. <laughs> it looks kind of like an eggplant. Again, this was one that I had painted before I brought it up. Mm -hmm. This one is for die stamping. Mm -hmm. I have several of these plates of different sizes. This is the press I used to stamp the velvet book for the Folger. Mm -hmm. It was large enough to do that. And it has a tremendous amount of pressure. Um, so other binders use this press as well mm -hmm. um, because there's not another one like it for quite a long ways around. Um, also for the Kensal, I have a box chase so I can build up a, um, a much more complicated design. For instance, um, I had to stamp this. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was, you know, made a mock up here, got a woodworker um, to look like the battery in my phone is dying. Yeah. Um, to cut these pieces like this and then mm -hmm. i was able to put the type in here okay put it in here, and that's how i got the curved line so 
You know, I think, I mean, my phone is telling me we need to move on. And I think you've seen pretty much. I like, I like the, the, the picture, uh, the frame picture with type case. Yes. <laughs> yep. It's nice to have things up on the walls. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the bindery. Well, this is an amazing space. I like it. I've been here for a long time probably 30 years. I've been in the building for probably 35 years. Uh, originally, Dan Kelman and myself shared space. Uh -huh. And then we got too big for each other. So <laughs> I, I took this space and he's still upstairs from me in the old space. So but, a, lot, a um, lot of people branched out from this space. Yes. Yep. Yep. Exactly. This, so, was, this was amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, um, you're quite welcome. I enjoyed it. And, and it's also so well organized. I, I like how compartmentalized everything is. You, uh, you do different stages in different places. You don't work with your leather where you work with your papers. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, um, the pairing machine that I have, I bought that from the Folger Shakespeare Library many years ago. I was in a, I did um, a internship there for three months a long time ago, and they had the pairing machine, and they only had one room to do everything in, and the paper con conservator there hated the machine because it put leather dust up into the air, and they discovered they weren't really using it that much, so they decided to sell it to me and get it out of there. Uh -huh. um, I use it a lot. Um, but yeah, having the things compartmentalized is a good idea um, because you don't want leather dust on top of everything you're trying to do. And I, you know, I do some grinding of metal back there and sanding of wood so I can keep all of that contained in one room. Thanks a lot, uh, Peter, for uh, being with us and for showing a lot of stuff, uh, uh, a lot of books and, uh, and your, your shop. Uh, and I also would like to thank uh, our viewers and uh, please like the video, please, please uh, ring the bell to get uh, the updates. Uh, and I also wanted to say special thanks to our supporters on Patreon. And I'd like to invite uh, uh, more of our viewers to join uh, the crowd of our patrons because we have a lot of plans for the next year. We plan to add uh, a French speaking co-host to talk to uh, different French-speaking uh, bookish people, and uh, we would like we we want to uh, translate these videos into English as well. So this will take a bit more of uh, our budget. So if you can support us and uh, uh, make some pledges, it will uh, help us to bring this uh, uh, new project uh, sooner uh, to you all. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.